Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, the big can, show. The big show. As you can tell, there's a little bit of a difference tonight. We're actually together. We're doing it live. Uh, yeah, we're together on New Year's Eve, nonetheless. New Year's Eve. So we're bringing it. We're reeling in the new year together. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, in the future, we can do more of these. But definitely, this is a special one. Um, <laughs> we haven't done a live podcast since two uh two years ago on your hunt right correct yeah so here we are you know it's pretty pretty cool i'm i'm excited um got some cool shirts so joe's one of joe's side hustles we've talked about it on the podcast is uh broken antler knives and uh so today the the channel is uh sponsored by broken antler and uh joe hooked me up with a shirt so pretty excited about that pretty happy and and uh even brought me a, a Christmas present, uh, the pocket guide to field processing and butcher, butchering and cooking deer. So uh, pretty excited about that. And uh, I didn't get him nothing for Christmas except my smile. So your presence is my enough. presence is enough. That's <laughs> see, that's the. So yeah. <laughs> so well, moving well, on. Moving on. So yeah, we're on episode. Uh, 89 uh which is kind of a, a crazy crazy deal i guess uh looking forward to what's come up in the in the year coming being that this is the 31st and you know we have plenty more episodes coming down the pike and uh this episode we're gonna be talking about uh we've been discussing an article with with uh, about hunting elk and uh, so we're gonna talk about the number four thing on that and then uh, a couple other little topics of some hunting in incidences that were in a magazine and uh, some maybe a little bit of flashbacks of what we could do, what we, looking back from our season this year, what we can do better for next year. Um, yeah, so you want to get into it on the... Sure. Um, so, yeah, we've been doing the American uh, Hunter article, 10 tips for bow hunting elk, and... Our first one that we did was get in shape, second one practice, and uh, number three was be bivy ready, and number four is finding elk. Uh, Joe, I'll let you kind of kick that one off. Yeah, so this one, I think that's probably why, why everybody hunts is to find elk, you know. <laughs> it's <usually, laughs> typically what we want to do, right? Right, and so uh, and I had a couple, uh, what do you want to say, a couple little topics. It says three for sure. That you want to do and it's and uh and it goes into like uh three of them are your your senses hearing sight and smell and you know and, and then it goes into like finding uh vantage points that you can set and watch for a little bit hillsides and where they'll be bedding and uh well where they'll be feeding and uh you know listen to and then you can go into using your cow calls depending on the time of year but i think a cow call can be used year round you yeah 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 bugle and zeal a little bit more during the rut but uh um and then actually though like um speaking of year round i never i there was one thing with doing the cow call in the in the later seasons because the uh, elk are, are more bachelored up at that time. Right. So during during that time of this season, it probably wouldn't do you much good to do a cow call. True. Another, I mean, yeah. It, Maybe. I, I mean, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Just kind of what I was thinking, you know, from, from what everybody, the way everybody talks about how they bachelor up and. And, uh, but I mean, I guess if you, if you're hunting a cow, it would still work though. Right. Yeah. So. Sound like you're, yeah, a little cow moving through the woods too. Yep. I think you can use it to kind of help your sound. You know, like if you're, you, you're being, trying to be quiet, but oh, at the same call, time. You, that makes sense. That's a good uh, strategy. Do a little chirp as you're going through the woods. Yeah. Just yeah. To be so like, they're oh, like, oh, that's just milk. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Yep. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's one of the, you know, finding elk, um, I mean, that could be one of the hardest jobs whenever you're hunting elk is, you know, I feel like once you kind of locate them and know which mountain ridge they're on, uh, it gets a little easier after that because you, you have a feeling that you, you probably run into them at some point. But, but man, if they're not making noise or if you, you have no idea where they're at, 
it could be uh, it could be a nightmare trying to get into them and, and right. trying to figure out where to go. So finding elk is definitely um, it's one of those ones that I guess you read off here and you're like, well, duh. But <laughs> well, and one of the things too, you know, the saying using a vantage point and and uh, look out. And that's been one of the things that I've I've tried to do over the years is find a good spot to to look. But I will say that like my last two or three years, I've been more of the well. I'm gonna go beat the brush and and like I've I've found some vantage points, but like I said, my frame of mind has been more. I gotta put boots to the ground and just hike my guts out. Mm-hmm. And like and then I don't and then I haven't always been in the greatest vantage points. But you know, I guess this kind of goes into um, another one of our topics that we're you know like things that we. Uh, we did this year that we maybe saw success but we didn't see uh, success as in um getting an elk so like what I, so what i'm trying to say is <laughs> <laughs> uh one of the things that looking back and trying to understand the situation i was in and maybe make it a better situation was uh i happened to to be in a vantage point where i glassed down and i I saw a handful of bulls, a couple good bulls, but I was in a spike or cow unit for me. And uh, so I, I, and I watched, you know, a handful of bulls all evening, and the sun went down, got out of there, and then went right back to that same spot first thing in the morning. And to, there was a bull that was, you know, it was a north-facing bull, but it was to the east of me, and uh, the it was kind of, I wouldn't say a clear cut, but there's a you know, like a bunch of deadfall, and then there's a stand of trees, and these two bulls are making their way up the the stand of trees, and in my head I was like, oh no, I want to go down this down where I saw the elk the night before because I get that's where the elk are, right? And so yeah, I went down there and saw a bunch of sign, but looking back, I was like, well maybe I should have just tailed those elk because it was like kind of the beginning of the rut, and so then might have led me to where the cows and the spikes were. Yeah, yeah. Now it makes sense. Instead of going down where they were, you right. would have kind of tried to go where they're going. Right. That's a hard thing, though. Like, uh, when when you get in the activity and you are seeing them. Right. And, well, and like I said, I did see two bull elk, but I my tag wasn't good for the two bull elk. Right, so, like, right. I just kind of rip, wrote them off and was like, okay, I don't need to worry about them because I can't hunt them. Yeah, that's kind of a funny, yeah, that's kind of, I, I, I get what you're saying there, like it's, and, and I get why you'd make that decision, you're like, well, you know, I'm not even hunting, you know, it'd be nice if I could get them, but I'm not even hunting them, and then, right, and then, uh, and then you totally ignore them, but yeah, they could have led you. Right, I, I'm not, I'm not to say that they Basically, would. you should have let the horse lead you to water, right? Exactly. Isn't that the old saying, something like that? Something like that, yeah. So. Well, then. You know, they kind of, since we're staying on that note, or we're on that note, not staying on it, <laughs> uh, but if you've been listening to our season last this last year on the podcast, uh, opening day, um, we, I think it was opening, yeah, opening day, we ended up having a little cow and a calf come up to where we were watching. We're kind of on a vantage point, in a way, we, we saw a couple awesome bucks, and Right beneath us, we had an opening, and uh, we had a cow and a calf come up. And you know, it was one of those moral things of do we go after the cow because it had a calf? And you know, I was like, no, nah, I ain't gonna do it. But then Eric's like, okay. And then I was like, well, shoot, I got this opportunity. I'm gonna at least see if I can make something happen. And well, nothing ended up happening, it ended up winding us, and which was taught us a huge lesson in wind. But I, you know, got wondering, oh, I, we were getting close to dark, but I thought, well, we probably should have just sat there and just watched it because they didn't know we were there. They had no clue we were there. No clue. And if we would have stayed higher, it might have not have winded it, us. Correct. I don't know that it would. But again, it's one of those things like looking back, like, well, shoot, probably should have waited to see if there was more to follow because they showed up and we're like, oh, let's go make something happen. Yeah, like it wasn't yeah. like we waited any time to see if there was more coming we just tried to make something happen 
that's a beautiful thing about this hunting stuff is it's it's hard because <laughs> you know you get so many of those kind of chances so it's all kind of like numbers right like you might run into a herd and you're like oh they're a thousand yards away how do i close the distance yeah. and then you might close the distance and have a couple there and you're like okay i'm gonna get a shot and then the wind swirls and and uh you, you don't get a shot at all and then you might run into that two or three times i mean we we you know i think you ran into elk a few times after that hunting weekend right, right? and you know um but opportunities never presented themselves and and that's the craziest thing about hunting is is it it's just one of those things where everything just has to line up right and you still might not come home with an elk and <laughs> and uh, i think this year we really got in a lot of good activity that way and really really kind of i feel like i took away this year uh, understanding what I need to do and and trying to do it better. I mean, I'm all, there's always room for improvement. Right. I think even if you're one of the best elk hunters, you're still always trying to improve uh, in some facet. But I know for me, that's one takeaway that I have is is um, I just want to. I'm like, okay, I know what I did to get a little bit of activity going and some success, so I need to duplicate that for next year, but even work harder. That's the biggest thing with elk elk hunting in general is just you're always working hard. You're always right. working hard, and well, if you're um, always working some type of a muscle, whether it's like your brain or your uh, your legs or your back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And sometimes none of them want to work at all together. So right or at all. So <laughs> it uh, yeah, it it definitely can be be very very. Uh, can get frustrating out there and, and I know we've had we've had a couple years where you know we were, we were in that kind of bringing it back to that uh, our, our list of 10 where we were just trying to find elk you know speaking of what you were talking about it was third season I think that's why we discarded it but uh, I think it was the first year that me and you started hunting it together again uh, we saw we well we heard cows up above us during the nighttime. Yeah. Um, so that was one indicator that we should probably do something, and then the other end we we were seeing cows every once in a while, but we just weren't seeing any bulls. And instead of being like, well, maybe we should try to you know figure out where they're hanging out or where they're going, um, we were so focused on looking for a bull, we just like, oh that's cool a cow, <laughs> yeah. and, and totally and, and you know I look back on that and I go. I go, I know that we were going under the concept like we were trying to look for that bachelor group of, of elk, but, um, I mean, they could have led us to the bachelor group, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day. And, um, uh, yeah, it was one of those things that I think back on a lot, and I'm like, why didn't we follow, like, go where they were and uh, at least see what they, what they they probably had more to offer to us than what we had to offer. Right. Well, was, and that's pretty obvious because we came home with nothing that year. So. Yeah, we just watched them go by. Oh, look, elk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just oh, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> um, but that year too, I think that was the first year that I was up there in that area. Joe came down over to Colorado to hunt with me. Yeah. And um, so I was trying to also figure out the mountain, and that's that's another thing. I'm sh I'm sure that'll be one of the if it's not. It might be in that list. I can't remember for sure. But um, with that said, though, with all that said, like that's another thing is just learning your mountains that you're going to and trying to understand them. Because I, I think no matter, you can get to know a mountain, but it'll always there'll be always you you'll always find something new there. I think. Yeah. And so. Uh, well, like you know, you're only going to spend your time in certain areas. You're not going to cover the whole thing. Well, I guess. Depends on how how motivated you are hiking. You're never gonna, you're not gonna cover a whole mountain in one year. No, no, no. Yeah, that's the hard thing too. Like this this area that I saw last was a pretty good area, and and I got into a little bit of activity. I've talked about it in other podcasts. Um, it's a pretty good area, but man, like there there's something itching at me. I'm like, man, I really like this area, but. I want to go across the bridge on this whole other side that I never even explored before. And, you know, I mean, it's all kind of in that same spot, but it's like, there, I didn't even, there was a part of the mountain that I didn't even touch. And I'm like, what is over there? You know? Yeah. 
that's another thing just being out there i'm always for me you know i feel this way is a lot of the time i'm walking along and I just can't ever stop. I'm like, what's what's over the crest of the hill over here? Well, like, yeah, the one thing for me is like, well, what if it's what if the elk's just on the other side there? Exactly. Like, yeah, like, yeah. I gave up on this side and I just had to go that little bit further. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Then I just end up being further from camp. Right. And that's, <laughs> you know? Well, that takes us into like that. With I don't have it written down, but just like that, if you're not seeing any elk sign, there's probably no elk, so it's not used going that next ridge. Yeah. And which is, yeah, that, that was probably one of the, um, I feel like that's probably something that we really took better note of this year and, yeah. and took and worked harder at this year was, was, um, looking for the sign and, and basically not being afraid to leave the air. No matter, you know, I, I know there was years prior where we would like, we would look at it, be in an area and be like, man, it seems like it's just such good elk ter territory. <laughs> But there's no sign there, and we but we would still stick it out because we thought in our heads that <laughs> it would be good elk territory. And yeah. So that's that's really a big one there is just follow your sign. The, your sign's gonna tell you where they're at. Yeah, don't be scared to like yeah to pull out. I think that's uh, I don't know. I mean, there's some wisdom in that if you can clue into that as soon as you can. The other thing I got kind of beat on this year was. Uh, I got hiking into an area and there's a bunch of, of bushes that were like eaten up and I was like, oh, I'm getting into it. Well, come to find out it was just a sheep herd. Oh. And so like I kept going deeper and deeper thinking like, oh, I'm, I'm in them. <laughs> but you know, there's a perspective to that, uh, which is kind of, because I know whenever I was hunting with you, I, I got tricked on that once or twice. Um, I was like, ah, oh, I think I smell them. And, and you're like, ah, oh, that's probably sheep. Um. But there is kind of a caveat to cattle and sheep and all that is uh, really you can use that in your favor in the in the fact of, of covering your scent, right? Like, so if, you know, if you're in an area where there's cows and there's, you, you know, they can help cover your scent for the elk. So, you know, depending, I mean, you still got to use your wind and stuff, but um, uh, what, what came of that was somebody was complaining on, on a post. I, I see those posts on Facebook, and somebody was complaining on a post uh, on one of the Facebook pages about how these farmers let their cows roam during hunt season, how he didn't think it was fair. And somebody somebody said, ah, be grateful for it because they can help cover your scent. And, and uh, you know, I never had that perspective beforehand, but after I, after I read that guy's comment about being grateful for it because they help kind of cover your scent and help you get closer to the elk, I was like, man, that that makes sense, you know. Why why wouldn't it work? And uh, so, so yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's all trial and error, and I think me and Joe have been on it on trial and error for quite a bit. But you know, we're getting there every day, and we are. And um, you know, hopefully next year we get to take home some some elk meat. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it could get hard, and you know, it has been hard, but yeah. just don't ever give up, you know. And some people, I mean, I know some people. You know, it's one of those things like anybody that gets, um, anybody that gets successful out there, I'm totally excited for. But it is a little disheartening whenever there's that one guy that's like, ah, first year hunting and, and got my big elk or so, you know, <laughs> and you're like, man, you lucky son of a gun. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, good for them. And, and um, you know, I... I it's one of those things like I'm, I'm just not ever going to quit this stuff. And I think it keeps me accountable in a lot of ways and keeps me going, keeps me excited. Doing doing this podcast is, you know, helps with all that. And um, I don't know. I'm probably random. <laughs> you guys probably heard this before, but I'm rambling on. So <laughs> we could probably move on to some other stuff. If yeah, well, we do we want to go over the uh, Hunter Orange? Yeah, so um, – so out here in Colorado, I don't know how I want to, I came across this earlier today, um, out in Colorado, and, and I heard this before, but we never brought it up on the podcast. Uh, there's a, you know, it's kind of hard to throw this, or let me, let me put it out like this. We try to stay pretty lighthearted, you know, we're not trying to be always too controversial, but um, and we've brought this up before in later podcasts. Let me get to the point here: is 
is uh, earlier this year during archery season, uh, somebody, a guy got shot uh, by a muzzleloader hunter, and um, and that guy that guy died. The archer the archer uh, died uh, from from as a result of this and. The uh, muzzleloader guy, you know, he, he, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's mind baffling because. So, for those of you that are listening and don't know, Colorado uh, muzzleloader season overlaps during archery season. So, there's a week in archery season where the muzzleloader is, is hunt, is hunt is going on. And the art, the muzzleloader has to wear hunter orange, but the archer hunter. The bow hunter does not have to legally does not have to wear hunter orange. He he can wear camo. Yep, exactly. And man, it, it's so it's so confusing to me, and I don't understand it because my whole life I've been taught to. I've probably been overly cautious with it with the idea of of uh, making sure you're shooting at what you want to shoot at. Uh, I. I believe uh, Fred Bear's thing is don't regret your shot or right. something about that. One of yeah. his commandments is not regretting. And I've kind of lived with that motto in my own head too. And I don't understand how people can shoot an, uh, another person without even seeing the animal. I mean, I get whenever, you know, you're frustrated and you're not seeing nothing and then you see the bushes move and you want to shoot. But, I mean, it could be a bear. It could be a, you know, you're trying to go for an elk. It could be a deer behind that bush. It could be a bear. It, could be a, right. another hunter. I, I don't understand why how these people pull the trigger on this situation and think that. But then you know some people, like older generation, their eyesight's getting bad. And, yeah. I don't know. Maybe 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 they're so excited for it that these things you know, and maybe a little tired. Um, their mind starts playing tricks on them, and then they you know in their head they make out an animal. Right. You know, yeah, I could. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of possibilities, but it's so weird to me how it happens. Like and, for me to for me to see that happening, it'd have to be some thick brush that you see, you see just a, a dark object going through, and your mind just associates it to whatever you want it to be, and uh, you know, it's kind of like one of those things, like you know, oh, I hear a noise, it has to be a monster. Yeah. You know, yeah. so like, oh, I saw something move, it has to be an elk, because that's what I'm after. Yeah. But I, yeah. I still I agree with Eric. Like, you know, you want to be sure of that shot, and it, you know, to, I don't. <laughs> you want to give the guy the benefit of a doubt, but if you end up shooting somebody, like, I don't know how that can be confused either. But, anyways. Yeah. So, uh, with that said, there's a few. Uh, there, there, so there's kind of a point to this article. Uh, there's a survey in there. Um, let's see. I can't remember exactly where I found this. But uh, I'm sure if you go to uh, to uh, Colorado CPW website, you could probably find the survey. Um, I think I found this scrolling through Facebook, if I'm being completely honest. But the whole point of this whole thing is they're they're throwing out some options to change it, and they're they're going to either make archers wear orange during that hunt. Um, that's one option. Uh, another one is 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 actually just doing like a survey so they throw out a survey to basically to help remind like that archers aren't wearing orange and uh let's see then there then there's there's one that's that's a little extreme that i'm not into at all is making archers wear orange the whole season um that's kind of one reason i <laughs> wanted to do archery so i didn't have to wear orange <laughs> so so um but Regardless, uh, some of these options, you know, uh, some of them don't sound too bad. I ca I was already before this came out, and I was reading through this. I was already looking at um, maybe even taking that week off anyway, because I I ran into that a little bit. I, I never ran into anything dangerous, but um, I did run into a couple muzzleloader hunters, and and you know we kind of snuck up on each other, and whatnot, and. And, uh, and it played in my head a little bit. I'm like, man, you know, they were antsy and wanting to shoot, you know, the way I popped out of the brush there, like they could have shot at me, shot toward me and, and, uh, right. not knowing the difference. And well, not to cut, do a, cut you off there on your, on your thought, but I just popped up on me. That's kind of interesting. 
that opening day that you went hunting with me and we kind of set up in that canyon and we were going to see if anything came up. Well, something came up the canyon, but it was another archery hunter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we got we we were getting excited. Yeah, we were getting you know? excited. I mean, obviously we we spotted we spotted what we saw or what we, you know, um we spotted the the person, the right. archery hunter and and uh we didn't have our bows drawn. No. Well, I couldn't well, yeah, anyway, you're... but Joe didn't have his bow, <laughs> you know, Ready drawn. To go. Or, yeah, <laughs> nothing like that, but we uh we definitely were we're getting excited yeah. thinking it was an elk yeah i know? remember hit, we sitting down and a little bit later there's twigs cracking and that was it's like one of those like oh <laughs> we did it it's happening we chose yeah, good. yeah yeah <laughs> we made a good choice whatever would have been a big old bear or something right. you know big old mountain lion or something then we we'd go from getting all excited to crapping our pants or something yeah but, <laughs> but yeah it, 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 you know to make point to to really hit it home is is man just be careful out there you know anybody out there that's hunting just pay attention to what you're shooting at and yeah i can only imagine you know everybody probably thinks oh that'll never happen to me until it does happen you know even me whenever i talk about this i i think well you say that with a grain of salt because it's like you know no one's perfect and no one yeah exactly and you know who who knows if you'll ever be in that situation exactly. you don't want to be but you don't know you don't know what what the hunt's going to bring <laughs> exactly because exactly. you want to it's i mean double field you don't want that to happen to anybody else and no. you don't want to do that to anybody else so like you know it's one of those yeah you just you know trying to be careful so everyone can go home exactly yep that's exactly it man you just want to get you you're out there you know the guy was an out-of-stater um i <laughs> he was there for a good time he, he was there for a good time spent the out-of-stater money you know i'm i know for, I'm positive he did not want to shoot somebody, you know, and right. and, and he made that mistake because he got too excited or whatever, whatever go went through the guy's mind, and and um, you know now I think the guy is doing jail time if I remember right the last time I looked at it, um, they're charging him with with something I can't remember what it was, some kind of uh, you know it was like an accidental they, yeah. homicide thing, but. Um, but yeah, and and this happens over on the Colorado side a couple times. A, uh, I'd say, say about once every five to three to five years, give or take, you know. And uh, it's it's just a shame that it happens. But it always actually happens during that muzzleloader season. It seems like I've there's been other stories in the past. Um, with that said, we're gonna have a hard out here in a minute. Uh, so uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think I have anything else. So just stay stay tuned for thanks. It well. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Hopefully you guys have a new year and prepare for elk season in a handful of months. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better. Happy New Year, Joe. Happy New Year. Yeah, way to <laughs> way to bring it in for the uh, for the for the new year. We we did one together live, so excited for that. Hopefully we can do more and and uh, and make more uh, content. More, be yeah, better content in the future and. Hopefully we can do more of this, but this time it just kind of the way it worked out. So excited for that. So thanks, guys. Have a good one, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching the Struggling Hunters. We're out. Bye.